What's going on? Why are we matching? 70 episodes we've never matched once. I know, and I hate it. I, you know me. I don't. That's the best part about the whole thing. You hate matching people. Yeah, so let's just get this done. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of The Dig, a series dedicated to helping you improve profitability on your farm. On today's episode, we're uncovering strategies that can turn your 100 bushel soybean dreams into 125 bushel realities. I'm Aaron, this is Colin, let's, let's dig, dig in. in. You know, I guess that was a pretty bold claim to start the video with, but it's true. We've learned some things in our 125 bushel soybean plot that can really help increase yields out in the real world. You guys might be thinking we're doing all kinds of crazy stuff down there, throwing snake oils at it left and right. But honestly, that's not the case. Don't get me wrong, we pour the coals to that plot, but some of the most basic concepts are what helps us achieve those top yields. I think I know where you're going with this. You're talking about the success strategy. Bingo. Without a good solid foundation, it's hard to build a big factory. That's why our PFR proven success strategies are a vital part in raising some big time soybean yields. You know, we don't need to spend forever on these, but let's break them down real quick for the viewers. Then we'll get into the other stuff we do in the plot to push the yields even further. Starting with success strategy number one, fungicide at R3. We've seen this work time and time again in the PFR plots and we've adapted it to the 125 bushel plot too. The only difference is we've also applied fungicide at that R1, R2 time frame, and again later at that R4 time frame. The key with R3 is protecting the money nodes, nodes six through 13. We call them that because two thirds of the yield comes from the middle third of the soybean plant. By spraying both before and after R3, we're able to maximize protection for the whole plant. Also, be sure to pair those fungicide applications with insecticide to get an even greater response. Before we move on, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you get notified when we upload future videos. Oh, and also, any studies that we've talked about are linked down in the description. Success strategy number two, planting date. If you're not planting beans early, then you're leaving potential bushels on the table. And I say potential because over the last 27 years, we've seen the highest yields come from beans planted in the second half of April when we average that data out. Now every year's different and we've all had times where some late planted beans were your best ones. But overall, the data shows us early planting consistently gives us higher yield potential. And that's why we always try to get our 125 bushel attempt in the ground around that mid-April time frame. Success strategy number three, seed treatments. If you're planting early like Aaron just talked about, you gotta make sure that you've got good seed treatment to protect those soybeans from diseases and insects. Over the last 15 years, we've seen a $44 average return on investment from seed treatments, and we haven't had a single year where it gave us a negative ROI. In the 125 bushel plot, we don't do any extra uptreating. We just run the standard Escalate SDS package that comes on our soybeans. Success strategy number four, row width. We've learned this firsthand, both in our PFR plots and in the 125 bushel attempt. Narrow rows tend to give us higher yields. And I'm not talking about seven and a half inch drilled beans here. I mean 15 inch rows planted with an actual row unit. Anytime we can narrow up row spacing, but still maintain the precision of a meter in a row unit, we tend to see an increase in yield. Some of you might remember the 10 inch planter we built a few years back. When we compared it to 15s, 20s, and 30s, the 10s always came out on top. In fact, the highest yields we've ever seen in the 125 bushel attempt came in 2022 when those 10 inch beans hit 130 bushel to the acre. Success strategy number five, seeding rates and early planting. We've already talked about early planting, but to piggyback on that, when we get beans in early, we don't need as many plants per acre to achieve higher yields. In fact, our economic optimum seeding rates for early planting is right at 100,000. Now, we don't generally recommend going that low across the board, but it shows us that early planted beans have more vegetative growth and branching, which helps us maximize the number of fruiting points. As we get later into the season, we generally recommend increasing populations by 10,000 for every week 
after May 15th to account for the lack of vegetative growth. In case you were wondering, we typically plant 125 bushel plot at 100,000 population, as long as we're going in early. All right, so at this point, you're probably thinking, okay, do the basics right, got it. But there's gotta be more to it than that, right? Well, like we mentioned earlier, the success strategies are just the strong foundation. The rest of what we do in the plot revolves around water and nutrient management. So let's start with water. We all know there's times when we have too much. So to deal with that, we installed four inch tile every 15 feet down there in the plot. I know that sounds a little overkill, but it allows us to get water off the field quickly when we need to. And it also gives us a chance to get in there early in the spring and helps minimize any anaerobic conditions from overly saturated soils. Now on the flip side, if the weather turns dry, we can actually close that tile to conserve moisture. But like you said, Sometimes we need to get water back on the plot, and we've got a couple ways to do that. First is just your standard overhead irrigation using our linear irrigate. We've also got the ability to fertigate and chemigate with an injection pump. The second method is Netafim drip line, which we have buried every 30 inches across the plot. We can use that for fertigation as well. One thing we've noticed, soybeans really don't like wet feet early on, so most of our irrigation happens later in the season. All right, well, that brings us to the next piece, and that's nutrient management. Like Colin mentioned, with both the overhead and the drip line irrigation, we can fertigate, which is applying fertilizer through the irrigation system. Now, that gives us the ability to apply anywhere from 200 to 250 units of nitrogen around R3 to R4, roughly, to supplement beyond what we get from nodulation. Now, we also apply sulfur in a five to one nitrogen to sulfur ratio and feed various micronutrients throughout the growing season as well. This year, we're changing things up a bit and actually incorporating some foliar applications of micronutrients with the sprayer too. Now, having a way to manage nutrients throughout the season is critical when we're talking soybean yields over 100 bushels. But we also get that not everyone has irrigation or fertigation capabilities. The good news is you can still influence yields with foliar sprays, even without those systems. Now, there are also some newer tools to manage nitrogen like coated urea or ESN that could help time out nitrogen release later in the season when the plant needs it most. And you know what? I've got one last thing to throw in here and it won't cost you a dime. Make sure you're harvesting your soybeans in a timely manner and at the highest moisture you can without getting docked or running into storage issues. Here's some quick math. On a 100 bushel soybean crop, the difference between harvesting at 13% versus 10% moisture is over three bushels. And at $10 for soybeans, that's $30 an acre. So you're telling me in 2022, when we cut 130 bushel beans down there at 10% moisture, we were leaving some yield on the table. That is correct. Hmm. All right, so I realized that was a lot to unpack in one video. So let's hit the main points. Number one, follow the success strategies. That's how you set yourself up with the most yield potential. Number two, managing water. Soybeans don't like wet feet, so utilize tile and irrigation to make sure that crop has just enough water. Number three, feed the crop. Fertigation, foliar sprays, or time release products can all help push yields even further. And number four, harvest smart. Take those beans at the right moisture and maximize seed size, weight, and yield. And with that, we will see you guys again on another episode of The uh, Dig. The cool thing about this is I haven't worn this shirt in probably a year. And I was like, you know what, we'll get that one out today. What's up, everybody? And welcome back to another edition of The Dig, a series dedicated to helping you improve profitability on your farm. I'm Zach. This is also Zach. Let's, Let's dig, dig in. in. You didn't hold it. Oh, it's fine. Who says this first? Yeah. Chapter one. First suggestion. Wait. <laughs>